Welcome everyone. Today we're going to be talking about my own personal workflow for shooting and editing real estate. Now, for shooting real estate, it's very simple. I use one flash. Uh, I use a Rove Light 600, but you can use any flash that you want. This is just something that I use on a daily basis because it is a very powerful flash. It's a very nice flash. Uh, I, don't even, I don't even think they sell it anymore. Um, you can get a similar flash called the Explorer or the Explorer 600 from, uh, what is it, Flashpoint. That is a very nice flash. It's, it's very similar. Or the Orlit 600, I believe it's what it's called. Um, but anyway, you can use a speed light as well. You can get the, pretty much the exact same results just uh, by messing with your uh, camera settings. So what I did to start with is I took a base exposure of the room with a bounce flash into the ceiling. And I dropped the exposure down to 1 over 1 60th of a second. That's the highest my camera will go. Uh, I have a Canon 6D. That's the highest it'll go before it starts giving me weird uh, uh, shutter lines or um, I don't know what they're called. Uh, but you get the point. So 1 over 1 60th of a second gets me this w uh, window view and it exposes for the room. But it gives me some pretty gross shadows. Uh, and oh, I have an overexposed bed sheet right here. It's just not a good look. I would not send this out to anyone. Uh, then I took an ambient exposure for the entire room and I did not expose it for the window. I left that purposefully very bright because we're going to be brushing that window view back in uh, in the process, uh, the, the process of the action that I'm going to be talking about later. So this is a good base exposure for the window, or not for the window, for the room. If you want, you can bracket exposures and just kind of pick the one that you want or the one that comes closest. Um, I recommend a negative two, zero, and plus two for your brackets. Um, and just pick out the, the one that looks the best. And then I took the, I went back to one over one sixtieth of a second to get a direct flash frame. Now this is one of two direct flash frames that I did. This is um, taken from the side of the camera, and I'll show you just just in a bit an uh, kind of like the diagram that I use for um, flash placement when I'm doing this. But this is taken from the side of the camera, I believe right over here on this area. And then I did another one, same settings, on this side. And I, I was messing with this, but I did it on this side. So you can see that I have these flash shadows. And if you were paying attention to my little flub there, when you put it in lighten mode, it kind of cancels out those shadows just a bit to kind of give you a very flat image to work with. Doesn't get rid of all the shadows, but it does a very good job of getting rid of the most annoying shadows. So here's the diagram that I have for flash placement. Uh, my camera right here on its tripod, and I took one flash right here, just literally right, right on, the, not on the camera, but I put it like right next to the camera and I flashed directly into the room, just seriously, just direct into it. And then I moved it and I put it right here and then I flashed directly into the room. It's a very simple process. Um, anyone can do it, but there's kind of a, a almost a learning curve in getting it just right. Um, try to mess with the distancing on this, make it closer, make it further away. It really depends on what you're trying to do. You can also do it from here and then go down to here. You just want to keep that diagonal placement going on. So that being said, I am going to run the action that I made for blending all these exposures. It's a very specific action to only this type of method. So let's turn off all these layers and you're going to make sure that you, you have your bounce flash layer at the bottom. So should be the first layer. Then on top of that is your ambient exposure. And then your last two, it doesn't matter which one it is, just as long as these direct flash layers are on top. They can be like this or just the way I had it before. It doesn't really matter since 
they're going into light and blend mode. So let's go ahead and get started with the actual blending process. It's very, very simple. Actually, it's almost it's almost too simple the way it actually works. So let's go ahead and impress uh, the direct flash, bounce flash, ambient workflow. I know, not a great name. It doesn't roll off the tongue. So let's just go ahead and press the action or play the action and let's see the result. So now you'll get this dialog box that comes up with the color range tool. And what it is, what it's doing is it's basically saying, okay, this is going to be masked in. So you need to go ahead and paint that in with the brush. And you can mess around with the fuzziness or all you want, or just get it a little bit more kind of restricted or whatever you have. Just, I usually just use 20 and then 255. I feel like that that gets a good job at a at a really bright window. Um, I'm not going to blend in any of this. I'm just going to blend in the window. So let's go ahead and press OK. And you'll get a dialog box that says, using the brush tool, uh, shortcut key B, press in the brush in the window view and or overexposed highlights, i.e. lights. So you can use this for blending in lights or windows or both. So let's go ahead and press stop. And let's go to, I messed up this little thing. Let's go ahead and actually move that. There we go. Now you'll, now that'll work because I had it set after. So what we're going to do is get our brush and set the hardness to, I'd say around 40% and make sure our opacity is at hundred and our flow is at hundred. You can mess with these settings all you want, depending on how fast or slow you want to work. So I'm just going to go ahead and paint an outline out of that and just kind of work my way into the middle. It's kind of like that. And it looks like garbage right now, but you kind of get the basic idea. It's going to fix itself in just a bit. So let's go ahead and press play once we have our window view pulled. Whoops. Yeah, that's what I get for fixing it. <laughs> there you go. Now it's smoothed itself out. So there you go. It's, uh, it's a pretty good window pool, but the, the thing that I want to discuss the most about this is that it keeps the ambience of your ambient layer, but gives you the window pool, and it also gives you the accurate colors due to those direct flash layers. So let's go ahead and look at those layers. So we have our uh, direct flash layer. So let's turn these off. We have our ambient layer, and let me turn this off as well so you get a better idea. So we have our ambient layer, and once we turn on our direct flash layers, it brings in that color. It, it's very subtle for this image, but you can tell right here where this was blue, it just neutralizes that color and gets it, it just gets it right. And that's thanks to the color blend mode that is that it's set to. So that's pretty cool. And then if you have a image that has like, let's say the direct flash layer caused some weird colored uh, discoloration like it usually does because you're direct flashing, you're gonna get some highlights on things. Um, this layer mask right here is going to take care of that mess. So you see right here, it's very blue. This is really red. It's because of that direct flash layer. It's not blending in quite right. So I added that uh, that uh, layer mask just to kind of fix things up. So that's pretty much it. And then your bounced flash layer is your window pool layer. If we turn that on and off, we can see that it's taking it, taking the bounced flash window pool and just applying it to that area. And it does so in a very, uh, God, I hate using this word, but seamless way. <laughs> for a good amount of shots. I, I love using this method. It's such a quick process. I get through homes just like, if I can snap, just like that, if I, there we go. If I can just snap, but I get through homes very quickly by doing this. It's very, very efficient. Um, just go ahead and check out the link down below in the description and you'll get this actions, 
yeah, this action, play around with it. Um, I want to see what you guys come up with, if there's anything that I may need to change. Um, I'll definitely be, uh, be um, adding to this for different methods. Like let's say you wanted to use just one flash and one ambient and just kind of skip that color layer altogether and just blend those. Well, I can make that. <laughs> or you just want something that blends three bracketed exposures and it does it well and it does it really well, or you want to blend bracketed exposures and you get that color layer, and I can do that. <laughs> I can make these things. Like, all you gotta do is just ask me and then I'll, I'll make them. Like, give me some sample files and I'll, I'll get on it. So that's pretty much it. Um, happy blending, guys. <laughs>